What we are going to be talking about today is Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits with the inclusion of dependent sources. We are going to start by analyzing the following circuit, where we will have a 20 volt source in series with a six ohm resistor, in series with a dependent voltage source. We're gonna have this negative polarity on the left, positive polarity on the right. And our dependent voltage source will be providing two times some current IX amount of volts. Let's put another six ohm resistor down here. The current flowing through this resistor actually put it down here, it will be IX. And then we are going to have a 10 ohm resistor over here on the right hand side and our pair of terminals. So our goal here is to determine BTH, I Norton, and RTH for this particular circuit as seen between the two open circuit terminals on the right hand side. So the first thing that we're going to do is determine BTH. So recall from our lecture yesterday that the Thevenin equivalent voltage is simply the open circuit voltage measured across our terminals. So I'm gonna define VTH to be the voltage drop across our open circuit terminals with positive polarity on top. So we can really choose any means by which we want to analyze the circuit, uh, I'm going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law here. Uh, and so let me explain myself really quickly. Um, I know by inspection that the current that is flowing through the 10 ohm resistor has to be zero amps because the 10 ohm resistor is not part of a closed current carrying loop. Using Ohm's law, that means the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor must be zero volts. And from this, we can see that the Thevenin voltage is simply the voltage drop across the six ohm resistor by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law around the right-hand path, okay? So if I apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around the left-hand closed loop, what I will find is that negative 20 volts plus six ohms times our current IX minus 2ix plus an additional 6 ohms times ix is equal to zero. And from this, I can find 
that our current ix is equal to two amps and our thevenin voltage is then six ohms times ix or 12 volts. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns about the circuit analysis I did to determine BTH? All right. The next thing we're going to do is determine ion. So I'm going to paste my circuit here again. Recall from our class yesterday that the Norton current is found by short circuiting our terminals and then finding the current that flows through our short circuit. And I'm going to solve for this current using mesh analysis. So this will be my first mesh current. Let's call it IA. This will be my second mesh current. We'll call this guy IB. Applying KVL at mesh A. We get negative 20 volts plus six ohms times IA. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm doing my mesh stuff not in the order that I taught you guys, so let me correct this. We have a dependent source, so the first thing that we should be doing is expressing our current IX in terms of our mesh currents. Um, we should be able to see pretty easily that this current IX is simply IA minus IB, okay? Um, since we don't have any current sources, now we can move along to writing our KVL equations. I apologize for doing things in the improper order. So our KVL equation for mesh A is going to be negative 20 volts plus 6 ohms times IA minus two IX plus six ohms times IA minus IB is equal to zero. And our KVL equation around mesh B, is going to be six ohms times IB minus IA plus 10 ohms times IB is equal to zero. And now we're going to solve this system. Okay. So let's get our calculators out. See what's going to happen here. Uh, really, we have an option here. We can solve this as a two equation, two unknown system, or a three equation, three unknown system. Uh, let's solve it as a two equation, two unknown system. So In our first equation, which is going to be our KVL at mesh A equation, we have six ohms, or a factor of six um, IA, and then another factor of six IA. So that's going to look like 12. But then we also have to subtract two IA from the minus two IX contribution. 
So our coefficient for IA should be six minus two plus six, which is 10. Our coefficient for IB should be minus negative two, so positive two from the IX term, and then minus six from the rightmost term. So positive two minus six to me is negative four. And our constant term will be 20 volts. In our second equation, our coefficient for IA is a negative six. And our coefficient for IB is six plus 10 is 16. And our constant term is zero. And I get IA to be 40 over 17 amps and IB to be 15 over 17 amps. So who can tell me what I Norton is now that we know those mesh currents? Exactly right, Devarie. I Norton is simply IB, which is 15 over 17 amps. All right. Anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding the analysis we did to determine I Norton? All right, I will move along. So our next step will be to determine RTH. So place my circuit here, uh, scoot it down some. When I'm finding RTH, I need to look at a dead network, which means I turn off my independent sources. So my 20 volt source is going to be replaced by a short circuit, like so. And then I will look in through the open circuit terminals and figure out what my equivalent resistance is. Now, for the circuits that we analyzed on yesterday's class, where we only had resistors, we were able to just use simple resistor combination methods with no real difficulty. This particular circuit, though, contains a dependent source. And so resistor combination techniques are not going to cut it. Instead, we're going to have to come up with different ways in order to determine this equivalent resistance. So our first method will be using ETH and I Nort. We know that the seven and equivalent resistance RTH should be the ratio of VTH divided by I Norton, which will be 12 volts divided by 15 seventeenths of an amp. Which I get to be 68 over five ohms, or I believe this is 13.6 ohms, okay? So that's one way that we can find our seven and equivalent resistance, but it requires us to be able to find both VTH and I Norton. Our next two methods are going to effectively use Ohm's law in a creative way, okay? So method number two will be the test voltage method. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take our dead network. So let me just paste this down here, turn off my voltage source like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a test voltage source to the open circuit terminals. We get to choose the polarity of the voltage source. So I'm going to choose positive polarity on top, negative polarity on bottom. It literally doesn't matter which one I choose though. And I'm going to arbitrarily choose the value of this to be one volt. So what we're doing here is we are measuring some voltage V test across our open circuit terminals. And we're going to measure the current I test flowing into our network of interest. And the ratio of V test to I test will be the equivalent resistance uh, seen between our terminals, okay? So pretty obviously here, V test is one volt. So how do we figure out what this quantity I test is? Well, let's use mesh analysis. So let's call this mesh A. Call this mesh B. Since we have a dependent source, we need our controlling variable relationship. So that's going to be Ix is equal to Ia minus Ib. We don't have any current sources that we need to worry about, so we can move along to our KVL expressions. So KVL at mesh A Uh, this is going to be literally identical to our equation we had before, except that our 20 volts is going to look like zero. Um, so we're going to have six ohms times IA minus two IX plus six ohms times IA minus IB is equal to zero. Now we'll write our KVL equation at mesh B. Um, so this is going to look like six ohms times IB minus IA plus 10 ohms times IB plus one volt is equal to zero and let's solve this system. So I'm gonna solve it as a two by two system again. Um, I have six IA minus two IA plus six IA or 10 IA uh, in my first equation. I have minus negative two IB, so positive two IB minus six IB looks like minus four IB. My constant term is zero. In my second equation, I have negative six IA, positive 16 IB, and my constant term when I move it to the right-hand side of the equal sign is gonna be minus one. And so what I will find is that IA is negative 1 34th of an amp. And IB is negative 5 68ths of an amp. So 
from here, I should have enough information to determine I test, which is just gonna be negative IB or positive 5 sixty-eighths of an amp. And now I can say that RTH is simply V test over I test, which is gonna be one volt over 5 sixty-eighths of an amp which comes out to be 68 fifths of an ohm or 13.6 ohms. So we get the exact same result without having to know V Thevenin or I Norton. Any questions about this test voltage source method? All right, well, our third method is going to be extraordinarily similar. We are now going to use a test current source. So since we're finding the seven and equivalent resistance directly, we always have to start with a dead network. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply a current source across our open circuited terminals where we get to choose both the direction of the current source and the magnitude of the current source. I'm gonna choose direction up and we're going to work with a one amp source. I'm going to define my test voltage V test and my test current I test. And we can see very obviously that I test is simply one amp. So now we have to figure out what the most efficient means to calculate the quantity V test is. I am going to use nodal analysis uh, because I'm trying to find a voltage. So I'm gonna identify my nodes. I am going to select my reference node. I'm going to use the bottom. I'm going to label my nodes. So here is the A, the B, and the C. And now I'm going to apply nodal analysis. Because we have a dependent source, I will have a controlling variable relationship. So I can say that IX is our nodal voltage VB divided by six ohms. Um, I do have a voltage source. So I'm going to have a voltage relationship. So I'm gonna say that my voltage two IX is going to be equal to VB minus VA. Recall that it's always the voltage associated, or excuse me, the nodal voltage associated with the positive polarity terminal of the voltage source minus the nodal voltage associated with the negative polarity terminal of the voltage source. Um, 
since I have a voltage source and neither of its terminals are connected to our reference, I'm going to have a super node. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle this super node like so and identify the currents that are leaving our super node. So we're going to have this current directed to the left, this current directed down, and this current directed to the right. And we're going to have to add them all together. So applying Kirchhoff's current law at supernode AB is going to give me VA over six ohms plus VB over six ohms plus VB minus VC over 10 ohms is equal to zero. And now I am going to write um, a KCL at node C equation. So let me scroll up here real quick. Um, so at node C, I'm going to have this current leaving node C and this current leaving node C. So that's going to look like VC minus VB over 10 ohms. And I'm also going to have the current directed to the right, which is going to look like negative one amps. Set this equal to zero. And I'm going to solve this system. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do here real quick, just so that I don't make any mistakes, is I'm going to put in my two VB over six ohms is equal to VB minus VA. Um, I'm going to rewrite that slightly. Um, so I'm going to have, let's see, negative VA. And then I'm going to have VB minus, uh, excuse me, plus VB minus 26 VB. So that's going to look like 46 VB is equal to zero. Everybody okay with that algebra that I did there? Right. So using my three equations, in my first equation, my coefficient for VA is negative one. My coefficient for VB is four over six. My coefficient for VC is zero. My constant term is zero. In my second equation, which is my KCL at supernode AB equation, my coefficient for VA is one sixth. My coefficient for VB is going to be one sixth plus one tenth. And my coefficient for VC is going to be negative one tenth. And my constant term is zero. Finally, um, I'm going to use uh, my third equation, which is my KCL at node C equation. My coefficient for VA is zero. My coefficient for VB is negative one-tenth. And my coefficient for VC is positive one-tenth. My constant term is positive one, and I solve. And what I find solving these three equations is that VA is equal to 12 fifths of a volt. VB is equal to 18 fifths of a volt. And VC is equal to 68 fifths of a volt. Now, since I know these three nodal voltages, who can tell me what V test is going to be? VC, add the correct, Devarier. 
So this is gonna be 68 fifths of a volt. And from this, our Thevenin equivalent resistance, RTH is V test. That does not look like an S, excuse me, over I test, which is gonna be 68 over five volts divided by one amp gives us 68 over five ohms. So all three ways gave us the exact same answer. Um, what's interesting about our test source method though, is that we are not required to know V Thevenin or I Norton in order to use it. So this begs the question, <clears throat> when would I use one method versus another method? <clears throat> Excuse me. I would argue that if you are given a circuit that contains independent sources, figuring out V Thevenin and I Norton is probably the easiest way to determine your Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH. However, if you have a circuit that does not contain any independent sources, so it only contains dependent sources, I would argue that one of the test source methods is going to be easier. Uh, it really, actually, it's the only way that you can solve for the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Um, it's really up to you as to whether you apply a test voltage source or a test current source based on your comfort level effectively doing nodal analysis or mesh analysis. However, some circuits will make things a little bit easier. Um, so for example, let's say that we were trying to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance of this network, where we have a 2IX dependent source connected to a five ohm resistor connected to a 10 ohm resistor like so. And then here are our terminals. Okay. So there are no independent sources in this circuit, which means we cannot determine VTH and I Norton. We will have to um, use one of the test source methods. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me define my current IX to be this guy right here, okay? So the question is, which test source method will make this easier to solve? I would argue that using a test voltage source here is going to make this a little bit easier to solve than using a test current source. So let me explain why I believe this. If we apply a test voltage source here, and just for the sake of argument, uh, actually, let me um, identify this quantity, E test and this quantity, I test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a voltage for my voltage source that makes this easy for me. So I'm choosing 10 volts. The reason why I'm choosing 10 volts is because now I have a 10 volt source in parallel with a 10 ohm resistor, which means IX is exactly equal to one amp and it means 2IX is exactly equal to two volts, okay? So I can find I test now 
just using Kirchhoff's current law. I don't even have to do full nodal analysis or anything like that, right? So what I mean by that is I could say that I test is equal to Ix, which is one amp, plus 10 volts minus two volts over five ohms, which comes out to be one plus, let's see, eight over five, 13 fifths of an amp. And from here, RTH is going to be 10 volts over 13 fifths of an amp. Or 50 over 13 ohms. Okay. To me, that was fairly straightforward. Just to make sure that we've done things correctly, we could instead use a test current source. So we're gonna put our current source over here. And I'm just gonna arbitrarily choose a one amp source directly up. And now I'm gonna wind up using nodal analysis to solve this thing, right? So identifying my nodes, I'm gonna have this guy. This guy. And this guy. Let's make my bottom node my reference. Oh, and I should identify my current IX. I apologize for that. Um, so let's call this node VA, this node VB. My controlling variable relationship. Is going to be IX is equal to VB over 10. I do have a voltage source, so I'm going to have a voltage relationship. So I'm gonna have VA is equal to two, sorry, IX. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and make that substitution here. So VA is equal to 2VB over 10. So I'm going to have VA minus 2 tenths VB is equal to zero when I solve this system. Um, since I have a super node here, uh, since this super node contains my reference node, I'm not going to have to write a KCL equation at node A. Instead, I will have a KCL equation at node B. And that's going to be, let's see, this current plus this current plus this current. So VB 
minus VA over five ohms plus VB over 10 ohms minus one amp is equal to zero. I'm gonna solve this system for VA and VB. So in my first equation, my coefficient for VA is one. My coefficient for VB is negative two over 10. My constant term is zero. In my second equation, my coefficient for VA is negative one fifth. My coefficient for VB is one fifth plus one tenth. And my constant term will be positive one when I move that one amp to the right hand side of the equal sign. And I get VA is, excuse me, my stylus will write 10 thirteenths of a volt, and VB will be 50 thirteenths of a volt. From here, we can say that RTH is V test over I test or 50 thirteenths of a volt divided by one amp is 50 thirteenths of an ohm. So we got the exact same result, but the amount of math that was involved by choosing a test current source was much more difficult than the amount of math that was involved when we chose to use a test voltage source. So either way will always work, but in some circuits, choosing the right type of test source will make the analysis much, much easier. Typically speaking, what you're looking for is the ability to define your controlling variable using your test source, right? So with this 10 volt source, I was able to say, well, IX is equal to 10 volts over 10 ohms is equal to one amp and move along. By choosing that current source, I wasn't able to do that. And I had to go through a full nodal analysis in order to determine what I was looking for. All right, um, does anybody have any questions for me regarding Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits, either with or without dependent sources? All right, nobody appears to be saying anything, so I will uh, lurk on Zoom for anybody that has any questions. Um, I don't have anything else prepared, so um, have a great rest of your afternoon if you care to dip out.